Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we're going to talk about what happened to the quality and parts that are out there today. Parts are not like it used to be years ago. Years ago you had a couple of really good quality manufacturers. Um, there was a lot of, of companies that gave you really good products out there. Today there's just so many companies that have a very uh, low-end product that they that they're just competing to see who can be the least expensive and sometimes the least expensive is really not the best one for you or your vehicle um, I do remember a situation where I had a customer one time came to me and it was a I believe it was a, a Ford the uh, the Crown Vic or maybe it was the Grand Marquis but they're both the same vehicle anyway but they came to me and they said that they they had a problem with the windshield wiper where the windshield wipers would stay in the up position that the vehicle would actually when they shut it off the wipers were up and they wouldn't shut they wouldn't get turned down they were constantly in the sight of uh, in their sight so I checked the vehicle out and sure enough the wiper motor itself was no good which is a very common failure on that particular vehicle so uh, I call the guy up I give him a price on how much it's going to be and he said listen he says a friend of mine a family member works at one of these big auto parts stores would I mind if he was to supply me with the part to to do the job and I said well I said the, the, the quality in that particular store is really not that good I said you know the parts that I use are much better a better warranty and if something happens and it fails you pay no labor to get the job done the second time and he says well I understand he said but you know my family member works there they would feel insulted if I didn't get it from them and it's like nope I, I understand there's no no problem I can do it I said but before I do I just want to point this out to you if I put the the wipe emotion in and that wiper motor for some reason fails or it has to be replaced a second time my labor is not going to be covered to uh, you know to, to do the job for free that if it fails you know you'll have to pay the labor to get the job done and he said no 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 he says I understand he said that that's perfectly fine with me he said that uh, you know that the guy can get the motor and send it up to us at the shop I said you know fine I said have him send it up and you know we'll take care of it so I get the motor and you know it looks pretty good it's in a, 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 a brand that I don't use all the time or I use almost never um, because you know as you know the, the quality in those particular parts stores are really not that good so I get the uh, the part up to me I get it and I put it inside the vehicle put it all back together I turned the windshield wipers on and they did work but man they were noisy uh, I mean I, I'm half deaf from using air guns my whole life and this thing was so noisy you could hear it grinding as the wipers moved back Back and forth it was a very very loud noise which I've never heard before ever so uh, I called the guy up and I said listen I said Tony I, I mean uh, my customer I said uh, listen I said there's a, there's a problem with this motor it, it's no good it's making too much noise and it's moving very slowly which I know it's gonna wind up causing more problems for you because you're gonna overload that uh, that that uh, that fuse and you're gonna wind up blowing the fuse out and, and it's gonna be an issue I said so you know you're really want to get a replacement and put it in there I said well you know why don't you let me get it from my paw store send it back and you'll have no problem and he, he said well let me let me call them and see what they're gonna do first so he calls them up and and uh, talks to them he calls me back and he said listen he said they have another one in stock he said they want to send it up to you and have you put it in it's like uh, okay I can put it in I said but you know remember if there's a problem you know it's, it's I can't warranty it for you you know you're gonna wind up having to pay he said no no I understand so he sends me the wiper motor up now I get the box I, t I get the box from the guy I look at it and there's all greasy fingerprints all over it I open it up and sure enough the, the motor itself it's it's a remanufactured motor but it's all greasy I called the guy up in the paw store I said listen I said this, this this motor's all greasy and I said this has been in somebody else's shop I said I really don't want to put it in do you have another one down there that you can give me that has not been in somebody else's shop and he said no that's the only one I have he says that's, that's, that's all I have and he says you know that's that's all I can do is order it for tomorrow and I'll have it tomorrow in the afternoon for you and I said well well that's not gonna work I said I gotta get this vehicle out of here I can't be uh, wasting my time on it and the customer needs the vehicle so uh, he can't get it so I call up my customer I said listen I said, you, you know what do you want to do he said no he said you know what I'm, I'm done with them he said just go ahead and, and order me the the motor from your part store and I'll and you know whatever it is I'll, I'll take care of it so I get the motor I put the the one in from my part store which was my one of my 
favorite stores. I go and I get the motor, and not that I'm endorsing them, it's just that that's the parts that I use whenever I really have a, a you know, a, a need for it. Um, and again, I'm not endorsing them, I'm just saying that that's where I got it from. Um, so I get the motor, I take a look at it, and sure enough, it's a very, very good quality motor. I put it in, put, put the whole thing back together, turn it on, and sure enough, it works perfectly. I call my customer, I said, you know, come, come and get it. The vehicle's done, and it's ready to go, and it's absolutely perfect. And I said, now, that, now being that I put this motor in, you know, it is warrantyable. You do have a, a, a warranty on the motor, so, so if the motor were to fail, you know, you can, I'll replace it for you for free and all that kind of stuff. So he says, all right, no, no problem. So while I'm waiting for the guy to come up, I called up the previous store that had sent it to me that it was the wrong one and uh, or the, the defective ones and I go and I uh, call the guy up and I talk to them about it I said listen there's no, nothing for nothing I said but you, you know you didn't have one bad motor you had two bad motors I said the second one was in somebody else's shop it was all greasy is there anything you can do for my customer to to help him out because he's, he's gonna have to pay me the labor twice to have this motor installed I decided that the that the third time I was not going to charge him for it that it was just going to be uh, he was going to be charged just the two times to to install it the third time I was going to do it as, as a freebie because he was such a good customer and I know the guy for probably every bit of 15 20 years and he's, he's always very good so the, uh, you know, and, and the guy in the park store was very good about it. He said, you know, well, let me call up my corporate office. I'm going to talk to them and see if there's anything they can do. And sure enough, they were actually pretty good about it. They wound up sending the, uh, to my shop before the guy even picked up his vehicle. They actually sent me an envelope with the money in it to, to give back to the guy for the failure of the second one. So it's, it doesn't happen very often. I got a feeling it probably happened because his family member worked in the, in the store and they just wanted to, uh, you know, to keep him happy. So, uh, that's what we want to talk about, the quality in parts today. What do you think about the quality in parts today? Are you better off buying cheaper parts and taking the gamble, or are you better off buying the, the good parts and putting it in one time and not having to worry about it a second time and doing the job a second time? Um, so I just want to get your opinion, see what you think about the parts that are out there today. Uh, is it worth buying the parts, the poorer quality parts and doing it possibly multiple times, or are you better off paying one time, you know, pay what the, what the good parts stores want for it and, and put it in one time. So I want to get your opinion, see what you think. Uh, I also want to talk to you about what do you think about this, uh, this drive along? Is it something I should continue? Is it something I should discontinue? So I want to get your feel on what you think about. It. Uh, I will uh, do this the, the, the next time that we do a, a drive along, which will probably be maybe next week or something like that. But I get this email all the time from subscribers asking me, what's my opinion? It, 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 do you think a young person should think about getting into the automotive repair business? Can they make a good living as an auto mechanic? Or is this better off getting a, a job doing something else other than the repairs? You know, I do love the business. I've been in it my whole life. I've been nothing but a mechanic. That's all I've been doing my whole life. Uh, could I see myself doing anything else? No, I don't think so. To me, I have to work with my hands. I love working with my hands. I love accomplishing and, and correcting uh, problems, um, especially when other places get it and they, they can't figure out what it is. I do like uh, I do like the whole challenge of, 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 of doing things. And, and nothing better than, than you tear a motor down, put it all back together, turn the key, and it fires up and it runs perfectly. Do I like the business? Yes, I do. Um, sometimes it's very frustrating to uh, to deal with the uh, the customers, the par stores, the insurance companies, and all of the other aspects of being in a uh, in a uh, an auto uh, repair business. Uh, but we'll talk about that on our next ride along. We'll see what uh, what everybody's input is on that as well, and I'll give you my opinion on what it would cost to to start a shop from start to finish from day one. What it would cost you to get into a business and, and and you know be a mechanic and be a successful mechanic I had one of my good friends one time was going to open up a repair shop and he came to me and he said Jimmy so what do you what do you think about the the repair business uh, if you gross X amount of dollars a month what would it cost you per month to run that business and I said well I said I can tell you from from experience that it's going to cost you at least 75% of whatever you make whatever you gross coming into the shop it's going to cost you 75% if not more just to keep the door open every day 
value. And he said to me, oh, you're crazy. He said, it can't be that much money. He said, you can't be. He says, you know, you know, I, I see how much money is coming in. you got to be making more. I said, no. I said, believe me. I said, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. So he does. He goes and he opens up. And I will point this out to you, too. He's not even in business anymore. He actually went bankrupt and he lost the business. Um, he came to me and he says to me, you know, he said, uh, comes to my shop one time. Now, he, now, I will say this. He had a gas station and an auto repair shop. And one time he comes into my shop and he's bragging about how much money he's making. And I said to him, Jeff, I said, listen, I said, before you decide to to uh, to spend all this money on, on additional tools and equipment, I said, in this business, you wind up with peaks and valleys. You'll have one time, one month where you'll be absolutely dead. You're, you'll be doing horrible business and the next month you'll have cars out the, uh, out the door that you don't know what to do with. I said, prepare for the days when it's going to be a little bit slow and, you know, you're not going to have all of the income that you have because you'll still need to pay all of your insurances, all of your workman's comp, your liability and your rent or taxes or whatever you need to pay. They don't care if it's slow. They still got to get paid, you know. So uh, he comes in, he's, he's bragging, a whole suitcase full of money and it's like, oh, look at all this money I'm making. I said, put that money in the bank because it's going to wind up costing you. Long story short, he wound up going bankrupt and he wound up losing everything. He came to me later on and he says to me, you know, he says, you know, when I asked you how much it would cost to actually to run a business and you told me it would be 75% at least to run the business, he says to me, you were wrong. I said, no, nah. I said, I'm, I'm not wrong. I said, I know I'm absolutely right. He said, no, he said, you're wrong. He said, it cost me probably 90 to 95%. He said, I wound up working, putting in crazy hours and, and and working Saturdays and Sundays and made absolutely no money. And that is how he went out of business because he was making such a very little amount of money because he took on so much debt when he first started in the business. All right, so that we're going to talk about that in depth. We'll talk next time about how much it costs you to run a business, how much your expenses are every month, and what it costs me to open up my door every day just to walk in and make a uh, to make a living. And of course, you know, I got to make a living too because I got my own personal bills that I need to pay as well. All right, so let me know what you think about this segment and what we could talk about in the future. Um, and hopefully we can continue it on a regular basis instead of me driving home and talking to myself or listening to the uh, to the news on the radio. We can uh, we can have a discussion like this and see what uh, what what your thoughts are on it. All right, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys on the next one. Have a good day.